Hello everybody, I'm Nora. Today I want to use my scraps. Using up my scraps is one of my favorite things to do. And I thought today we would make some rose quilt blocks using our scraps. You do not need a pattern for this project. Uh, my roses will look different from your roses. My first rose will look different from my second rose. Each rose is unique, just like in nature. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with a brown in the middle. This has a little bit of pink on the rosebuds, but I think that could go nicely with some of these other fabrics up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unfold this. I'm gonna use a smaller ruler, and I'm just gonna cut a piece, a small piece out. So as you see, I have one, two, three, four, five sides. I kind of just did that randomly. And now I'm going to pick my next fabric. Let's see, maybe I'll do, let's do this pretty pink one here. This is one of my favorite fabrics. This is like the last I have of this. Now I'm gonna cut a piece off of this. I am going to sew this piece onto one of my sides. So I'm gonna pick a side and do about that. And I'm gonna sew at one fourth inch on my sewing machine. Sew that on and I will press this open. Now I'm gonna take a second piece and I'm gonna sew it, let's see. I kind of actually, I'm gonna take the second piece and sew it over here onto this side like that. And now you can open it up and press that. I wanna fill in this little gap here, so I'm gonna cut another piece, measure it to be about the size that I need. I always do a little more than I think that I need. Fold it over, and so right along this line here. Open it up and press. So now I wanna change colors. I'm not gonna use any more of this fabric for the rest of this particular flower. So let's see what else I have over here that would go nicely. Let's do this rose fabric, seems appropriate. Here it is, and I'm gonna trim this piece a bit so that this is not so long. And let's put another one of these pieces along here. So again, I had cut this with the ruler so it's nice and straight. So it doesn't matter that this is sticking out here or here because I know that I'll have my straight line from following the top fabric. I'll trim those off and open it up. Let's trim off the top here. I added two more fabrics to this side and this side. Now let's add two more here and here. Let's see, which one should we do next? How about this one? Let's do that. This is actually a scrap from a, my very first quilt I tried to make ever, which obviously I didn't make because here's the pieces here. But I made this in high school before I knew anything about quilting. And I knew you had to have some kind of seam allowance, but I didn't know anything about rotary cutters or anything. So I thought you just drew a line along the edge and stitched along the line. Look how, how big my seam allowance was. So now I get to use this for this project. I'll line it up along here. I've cut my super straight edge with the ruler, flip it, and also along here. I love seeing that line. It kind of brings me back to high school when we <laughs> tried to make this quilt after watching the movie. What was it? I think it was How to Make an American Quilt was the name of the movie with Renona Ryder. And so my friends and I said, we want to make a quilt too. And then we bought all the fabric and didn't sew any pieces together, probably because we didn't know what we were doing. It doesn't look much like a rose yet, but I think that it will. I still have hope, and I think it looks cool no matter what. I think even if it doesn't end up looking like a rose, it looks awesome. I do like these fabrics together. So this is where it could look kind of confusing. You could think to yourself, where, where am I going next? This one seems pretty obvious because you would just go right along there. But this, you have a bunch of pieces kind of coming together all at once. So I would take the lowest one and just line it right up in a straight line against the lowest one. You could do something kind of wonky. Maybe we should do, you could line it up at a pretty heavy diagonal here. And how 
would that look? Let's open that up and see. That's kind of cool. Let's try that. Now it's starting to look like a rose. I can see it. So instead of on my next fabric, here, let me just take a, a sample piece. I'm not gonna use this, this fabric anymore, but just to explain, instead of going straight across one here, I think the more you can diagonal it, the better. So if you add one here and then you add a separate piece up here, I think that's where it really starts to look like a rose. So let's pick one more fabric to do. I could do this one or I kind of want to use this batik. Um, or I could use this polka dot batik. Uh, batik. Let's do the polka dot. I will trim some of these bigger pieces, but I'm gonna put this aside for now and let's work on the leaves. I'm going to use these two different greens, this polka dot green and then this other green for two different sides of my leaf. So my leaf will kind of come like this, but we want it to be straight lines. So for the first side, it's gonna be a straight line down and I'm gonna cut with my ruler to make sure this is nice and straight. And then it's gonna be three straight lines going diagonal, straight, diagonal. So let's cut this piece first, going straight line down, diagonal, straight, diagonal. Here's the first one I cut, and then I cut one to mirror it. Now, it doesn't need to be exactly the same, only the center line needs to be the same length. So what I'm gonna do is put these right sides together and sew along this line. Now let's cut one together real quick so that you can see, see how I did it. I'm gonna put this one aside for a second onto my sewing machine. Let's start with the green fabric. I'm going to make sure that my line is completely straight. Let's cut it on this side first and then we'll flip it around. It's just easier for me to cut like that. So now this line is completely straight and I want my first one to be a diagonal. So I'm gonna go all the way across, even though I'm gonna kind of lose this big chunk of fabric, you know I'll use this for something else. So I have another scrap there. Then I need my line coming straight down. So I'm gonna come straight down and not all of your leaves need to be the same size or exactly the same shape. They can all be kind of wonky and different. I think that actually would make them look extra cool. So, so I, I did my diagonal, then I came straight down, and now I'm going to turn this and make another diagonal all the way down to the corner there. And there's my first half. I'll do that same thing to the second. I need to make sure that this piece is as long as this one, and right now it's not. So let's see how far we have to go down for it to be the right size, right about there. So I'm just gonna line that up, cut a straight line. And you know what, I could even, I was gonna use this big piece, but I think I can get rid of that big piece, flip this piece around, so here's my straight side, and I think I can make this one into this half of the leaf by just trimming these edges. So I would say make three leaves total. It'd be nice if they were different sizes, but for our first attempt, we'll just kind of see what we end up with. But I'm gonna sew this one right sides together, and same with the first one that I did here. I'll sew those right sides together, and I'll make one more leaf. I have my three leaves. I'm gonna chain piece them together. I have my starter piece of fabric right here. This is just a scrap, just to get the sewing machine going. I have my leaf that is right sides together. I'm going to send that under the machine. When I get to the end, I'll take my next leaf, put it right sides together, and send the next one under. This is called chain piecing. And my third leaf, third and final leaf. Now I can cut them apart. I have my three leaves here. I will say that I would make the leaves bigger than you think because you lose a lot in the seam allowance. By the time I attach another piece of fabric onto this, I will have lost a, a good portion of this piece of the, of the leaf. So that's just something to keep in mind. But I like these leaves, I think they're looking pretty good. So let's, uh, let's take a look at our rows. 
Well, next we need to pick our background fabric. So if I'm looking at the rose and the leaves, I have three choices here. I could do this kind of rain looking wet spotches background, which I think looks kind of cool. Let's see. So that could, that could work. The other option would be this tan fabric that has little teeny tiny white dots on it. And this is kind of what I'm actually leaning towards here. I think the flowers or the leaves pop nicely. Um, my last option, which I think I probably won't use, but let's try it just in case, is this honeycomb fabric, which does actually look quite nice. Um, but I do like that. Hmm. Now I'm stuck. Should I use the honeycomb fabric or kind of the tan fabric? Um, I think I'm going to actually go with the honeycomb. I'm glad I tried it. Think about taking these two and lining them up kind of together like that, which means I need a background piece here. And if I want to only sew one line to connect them, I want to add a backing piece to this part and a backing piece to this part. I sewed the piece onto the side of each leaf. And what I would like to do, so this is on a diagonal here, and this is on a diagonal. So if I put those two diagonals together, if I cut away this, I should be able to sew these seams. So basically what I want to do is cut along my diagonal here. So I have the diagonal of the leaf and I'm going to cut right along the diagonal there. And I have my diagonal here. And I'll cut right along continuing on that diagonal. And then I should, in theory, let's hope, be able to now sew these two together, right sides together like this. So let's see how that looks. I sewed along that line. Let's open it up. And that's looking pretty good. Let's iron it. Now I have my leaf and my flower. I want to start encompassing the background around the flower and then I also have this other leaf that I'll need to attach somewhere but I'm thinking of attaching this leaf right about here. Right about here. So what I'll want to do is add some background fabric right here, add some background fabric right here and then cut a, cut a straight line right along the leaf. So it'll be a straight line right along here. Then I'll cut a straight line right along here and attach this piece to this piece. I attached the pieces to the base of the leaves and that will go right along here. But I'm not going to put that on yet. First I want to build the background around the remainder of the rose. I also made this leaf here. Again, just adding fabric to the two sides so that the bottom where it connects with the, with the flower is going to be straight. But first, I'm going to trim some of this and I'm just going to use my scissors to do that. So let's just go straight up here to start. And then I want there to be as many angles as possible because remember that's how we made it look rose-like. Hmm, I'm thinking. All right, let's try that. As you can see here, I've started to enclose the rose 
in the background fabric. So I'm pretty much ready to attach this piece here. Let me get a good look at that. So this would go right along here. And as you can see, this doesn't come quite to the edge. I think that might be okay when I, when, I cut, when I trim the edges of my final block, it might be all right. If I need to add another piece of fabric on, I can do that just by doing something like this, where it would be a bigger piece than this, but you can just kind of go over the edge, oops, other way, right sides together and flip it. And you can keep going, you know, out, 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 as, as far as you need. The only thing you need to be careful of is not to overlap with your green. I'm gonna do another piece of background here. So we'll pretend that, for example, that's there. And another piece of background right here. So let's see, let's just pretend that this is here for a minute. And then I can attach my other leaf. So now you can kind of see how that's going to look. I'm pretty pleased with that. So right sides together and flip it. The flower is done and I think it's looking pretty good. I do have a couple thoughts about it and things that I think could be better. I'm going to make the yellow one. I'm not going to take you through the process like I did with this because I think you have a pretty good idea about how I did this, but I will make the yellow one. And what I'm going to do differently is you see that by the time you get to the outer edge, there's some straight lines where a petal ends in the middle. And I think the petal is supposed to not end in the middle. So for example, this pink one should instead come corner to corner here for the last, the last outer rim. I am thinking that maybe this green border, the same green that I used in the leaf might be really pretty. So I might um, trim them in this green. Uh, I had mixed feelings about the background. It looks a little barbed wire-ish to me. Oh, this was the, the one I was gonna use. I think that this one would have been a little bit better. Let's do the yellow. We'll start with this. I'm gonna attach these two right there. I'm going to attach this here and this here. This one here. These, these two are a little different though. They're very similar color. I'll somehow kind of put them around like this. Next one's gonna go here and here. This one's gonna come about here next, so like that. And then I'll do another one kind of going like this. I'll put a piece here and another one here and then one of the same fabric here and then we'll be done with the flower and I'll add the leaves. I have the finished flower center here and I made a couple of leaves. I made the leaves smaller than I'd like, especially this one, by the time you get the seam allowance, the leaf is gonna be very small compared to the flower, uh, but I'm just gonna go with it. And then I started putting on some of the background fabric onto this leaf. I'm gonna do this blue checker fabric. Uh, which I think will go nice with the with the yellow orange. So I'm going to do it the same way I did with the last one where I'm going to put these two flowers or leaves together here. So I'll add a little bit of blue here and then I can just sew these right sides together and open it up. I started putting the background fabric on here and making these. I am not happy with these and so I decided to ditch them and instead I am going to use these leaves here which I think look way better so they're bigger they're much bigger and then the two fabrics complement each other so I'm not gonna have three leaves I'm only gonna have two and this is one thing I'd say about this is I this is something I do a lot where instead of just pushing through with something I don't like I try my best to fix it and sometimes I can't fix it for example you know I'm not absolutely in love with this and I'm not crazy about the background fabric but I'm I'm not gonna start over right I'm gonna I'm gonna just let it be and I'll I'll find something to, to do with this. But for something like this where I'm, I'm in the process of creating it and I haven't attached the leaves yet, I can still change course. I finished the quilt blocks. 
I added a little border to the first one that we did and I'll lay these out and take some pictures so that you can see, of course, as I always do. Um, but these really grew on me with time. So this one is wonky. This one I think technically is not as good as the first one. I still have some threads I need to cut off here. But um, there's something about it that at first I did not like and bothered me. Uh, it didn't look very rose-like and as as I kept working on it and adding the borders and things I really like it now for some reason now you can see that the leaves are not attached onto the flower the way that they should be they're off center and that's because when I was sewing that piece on I wasn't fully paying attention uh, and so I actually didn't notice that until the borders were on. If I had noticed it right after I'd done it, I would have just seen ripped it and, and re -sewn that part. But the borders were on and I was like, ah, the leaf is like not even really on the flower. But I actually like it. It's, there's something kind of like modern and wonky about it. Like, I think I'm gonna call these like wonky flowers, wonky roses, because they're not like beautifully quilted roses. There is something a little like, off kilter about them um but you know i at first i wasn't really liking this one either and then the more i look at it i don't know if i've just been looking at these too long today and the more i look at it the more i'm like oh that that's good right um but i actually do like them so i'm excited about these I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I'm thinking that maybe I'll just start kind of putting some of these projects aside and then I can kind of, st as I accumulate more of these types of blocks, not just the rose blocks, but blocks in general, I can do some sort of like sampler quilt with them. I think that would be really cool. I also think it would be really cool if you had some of these roses to put them as cornerstones in a quilt, maybe like a baby quilt or a quilt for your sunroom or something like that uh, but that would be really pretty or um, I mean if you really like this process and I do think it was fun I'd love putting those little those little small pieces together but you could just do a block of you know uh, six by six by six uh, quilt blocks all of different colored roses um, and that could be really neat so I think that there's a lot of potential here and uh, as always, thanks for joining me. As always, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.